Hi, my name is Sam Cusimano, and welcome to Electricity for Progress. Today, we are going to be assembling a Biodata sonification kit. This is the latest version of my Biodata sonification device that works with standard serial MIDI, uh, works with Bluetooth MIDI connections, which is great to connect to a Mac or iOS or Android device. It also works with Wi-Fi RTP MIDI that allows you to connect multiple Biodata devices on a Wi-Fi network and tap into all of the different MIDI data. We are going to be assembling the circuit board along with an ESP32 feather board from Adafruit. This particular Biodata sonification device will work with any of the feather boards and you can use different feather boards from Adafruit to do things like data logging to an SD card, uh, LoRa ra uh, radio connection uh, for long distance connections. You can use specific Bluetooth or other chips. Uh, there's a lot of options and opportunities. And in the future, when the ESP32 S3 is available in a feather form factor, you'll see that as an upgrade to my device. We have the circuit board for our version 005 Biodata sonification device, and it's labeled fairly well for the orientation of all of the components. We are using an LMC555 timer IC, which is a low voltage 555 timer. Uh, this particular biodata sonification process doesn't work with just any 555 timer. It does work with most. Uh, and here again, I'm using the LMC555. And we have an eight pin uh, socket, which is really good to use. So you can reuse your chips if there's ever a problem and you don't want to just be soldering your chips right to a circuit board. Sometimes you can overheat the pins. Uh, it's just good practice to use a socket. Uh, we have a tactile switch. Here are the five LEDs that are used for the display uh, red, yellow, green, blue, and white. We have a black and a green 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which is used for the uh, electrode probes through the green ones that connect to the leaves of plants. And the black one will connect to MIDI for a MIDI type A 3.5 millimeter output. Up top here, we have a 3.3 volt DC to DC isolator. This little box allows us to isolate the psycho galvanometer, the 5555 uh, timers galvanic conductance circuit is well isolated from the ESP32, whether you're plugged in through USB or just during its general process. We have uh, one capacitor in this kit. It is a 0 0.0042 microfaraday capacitor. There is an opto isolator. This is like a little LED and a photo uh, sensor in one little package. And this is used to optically isolate the output of the 555 timer as it runs into the ESP32. We have a little right angle switch, which is used to toggle the uh, power on and off using the enable pin uh, that's presented on the uh, feather board. There is a potentiometer. You'll notice it's a really stubby little tiny potentiometer. I think it's kind of cool. It works in the uh, enclosure that I've been building and 3D printing. Up top, we have a 3.9K resistor. Uh, this resistor and the capacitor are used to create a network which sets the timing of the A stable mode for our 555 timer. And as we measure electrical conductivity or resistance across two electrodes, two probes on the leaves of a plant, this network and this 555 timer will output a pulse width modulating signal that is then read by the ESP32 chip. Uh, finally, we have a uh, array of seven um, 10 ohm resistors. These are used mostly for current limiting for our LEDs. 
uh, over here behind me, there are short headers. I like to use these short headers that you can get from Adafruit for the feather, for the feather boards. Uh, it just makes a little compact form factor package. Uh, works great for a little 3D printed enclosure. So these are the parts. Now let's get into assembling this device. I'm just gonna push everything to the side. <clears throat> so the first thing that we want to do when assembling the device is uh, to put the female header here uh, on the bottom of the board. So most of the components in the kit are going on to the top of the board where you can see the silk screen. But then the feather is going to mount here to the bottom of the board, right, to the underside of it. Uh, and we want to, and it says that in uh, white, white silk screen on the top there. So I want to have this piece of header soldered in first, but uh, it can get a little wobbly, right? So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to just solder it in willy nilly. So what I'm going to do is put in both of the female header, the short header. I'm going to swing in uh, a helping hands here. And uh, here, let me just refocus. Now I'm gonna grab these short headers that are gonna be used. And my ESP32 uh, feather does not have the headers soldered in. If you are using your own feather board, you might already have headers soldered in. They might be long headers, so they can be trimmed easily. Um, so the point here is I'm gonna pop in and essentially mount the feather board to these short headers on the circuit board. Okay, there we go. So you can see how that's all a nice little sandwich. Um, now the goal here is to solder this center row. Uh, and that's the first thing that we're gonna do. So now I'm going to, maybe I'll try to bring the camera down a little bit and refocus. I have a soldering iron here now. There's lots of soldering irons on the market. Lots of them have varying temperatures. I'm soldering here at 365 degrees uh, centigrade. And uh, I have uh, this fine core, uh, rosin core solder. I also have a uh, little air tube that sucks the smoke away from my device. So sorry if it gets a little noisy as I put on the smoke absorber. All right, so now I'm going to try and um, I wanna tack on the first two. And so again, the reason I'm doing it all this way is I want to make sure that this center header is soldered in first and I wanna make sure it's nice and straight. So after I've tacked in these first two, what I'm gonna now do is I'm gonna pull the whole thing apart. I'm gonna take off the ESP32. I'm gonna take off the headers that were on the other side, I'm just gonna slide them away. And then I'm gonna pull out the male header. Don't have to do this. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, now I have uh, this in place. The first two are soldered down. Now I'm gonna bring my soldering iron back and go through. When you're soldering, you wanna heat up the work, meaning the circuit board and the pins uh, not necessarily heat up the solder, right? Introduce the solder after you've heated up the circuit board. For most pins, this is, should go easily. Now for pins that are in the ground plane, ground plane means all of the copper across this uh, circuit board is you know, etched or laid in uh, at the manufacturer. And uh, across the top and bottom, it's practice uh, to have ground cycled uh, all around everything. Um, and so this creates a large surface area, meaning you have to use a lot of heat in order to solder ground pins. So if you notice one pin is really, really hard, it's probably the ground one. All right, I'm almost done this here, and you see I'm only heating up the joint for you know a couple seconds. I don't really use more than five seconds to heat everything up and then pull it away. Now, always be willing to go back and touch up your work. So let me let me look at this myself. Okay, it actually doesn't look too bad. So now, what we've accomplished is we've soldered in the header at the very bottom here, and it's nice and straight. 
Yeah, first step. Now, let's start soldering in the components one by one. Uh, it's good practice to solder in the lowest profile components uh, at the same time. And it, that way it's kind of easy to like kind of stack stuff on top of each other and you know, flip the board over with stuff in it. So uh, we're going to start with these probes over here. Um, I have the black, which is going to go into the MIDI section here. And then I have the green, which is for uh, green means plants, right? It goes onto the leaves. This is for the electrode probes. Right? And they should both seat in fairly well. The green one actually clicked in there, uh, where the black one's a little looser. Okay, so I'm going to flip the board over here. Here's a little trick. I'm going to slide in the ESP32, and I'm just going to use it as like a brace to hold up the back edge of the board. Uh, you could use anything to potentially hold up the back, but that just gives it a slightly more level surface. So now I can put pressure on here with the soldering iron and solder on these components. So, it does take a little bit of pressure to make sure you have good contact with the circuit board and with the component. And whenever you're soldering in these jacks, make sure that they're nice and, and level and straight. Again, you heard it snap in with this green one. There's little plastic pins that sit into little tiny holes on the circuit board. So now I'm going to come over here and you know, see the black one's a little bit looser. I'm going to solder in the ground pin for the black. And then See, look at it, it looks nice and straight. Now let's come back here and solder in the rest of them. Reflow that. There we go. All right, so the first two parts are in. Those are the two 3.5 millimeter jacks. Next, let's insert the switch. So this switch is a nice little micro switch. It's got a couple pins on the side. Um, when I insert this, I always, you might have to like essentially bend one of these pins out, oh, ridiculously slightly, right? It's just on the outer package, uh, The metal case and then line up the other pins as it were and snap it right into place again make sure that it looks nice and straight and lined up before soldering it into place Next, I'm going to bring in the socket. So this socket is an eight pin socket for a dip uh, dual inline package. And there's a little tiny divot you can see at the one end. That helps indicate the number one pin, which would be at the top left corner. And then you can see on the board, there's a little tiny divot on the silk screen. And we will insert that in here. So now I'm gonna flip the board over. Now, sometimes it's a pain in the butt to flip boards over. If you use a uh, piece of card stock, or uh, here in my case, I've just got this like little piece of aluminum. Um, I'm just gonna stick it on there and flip it over. All right, so now I can kind of work with a, knowing that I held the thing in place. I'm gonna tack in these two pins. Once again, I'm going to slide in my 
ESP32 to help hold up the back. Next item on our list, uh, let's bring in the opto isolator. So the optical isolator has a little notch on the side of the package. It's four pins, and that notch indicates pin one. Uh, so the notch goes the same side, which that little divot uh, is marked in the silk screen. And so I will wiggle that into place. Uh, once again, I'm going to slide in my little piece of metal there uh, and use that to hold everything together. There is a ground pin right here, which again takes a little bit more time and pressure with solder. And if you're trying to solder and the ground is giving you a finicky result, move on. Solder the other pins you'll have a much easier result, you'll feel happier about yourself, you'll be like, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing, I can solder this. And then come back, apply some heat. All right. Okay, next item that we can insert here. Let's do the button. So you see the button is a simple tactile button, and it's got these little bent pins so it might be a little challenging to snap it into place but when it does it should snap very satisfyingly into place and now oh let's just solder those pins in again i'm going to slide my esp32 over in here hold up the other side for me one of these button pins is attached to a pin on the esp32 the other is attached to ground. Right. So that's the tactile switch is now in place. So next I want to start doing some of the passive components, uh, meaning the capacitor and the uh, resistors. And so what I'm going to do is take the, so the single 3.9K resistor is going to go over here in position R1. So each of the resistors, uh, you bend the leads. So I'm going to just grip the resistor, bend the lead around, make it into a little loop shape. And then see here it's in position R1, so it's 3.9K. I'm going to then stick the resistor into these two holes and there it is and you can see it will stand uh, upright on the board I'm going to swing in my helping hands here Oop. in order to make it easier for me to insert each of the parts so next I'm going to bring in the point zero zero four for two microfaraday capacitor, this little blue guy. And it doesn't matter which pin goes in which side for this specific capacitor. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in these two 10 ohm resistors. And similar to how we did the 3.9K, I'm just going to bend this into shape and stick it in the holes for R2 and R3. R2 and R3 are controlling uh, the current for the opto isolator as well as the current that's going to the MIDI output port. This is 3.3 volts so we need a 10 ohm resistor along with that for the MIDI output. Okay so now I've got those parts in there I'm going to flip the board over 
and solder it together. So again, I'm just going to use actually my, my business card here, put it on top, flip the board over again, and then I'm going to slide in my ESP32 again just to hold everything up. Let's uh, refocus and solder. It's a pain in the butt sometimes to solder with all of these wires sticking up. Uh, so just be careful with what you're doing. Take your time. Solder the wires one at a time. If they're really in your way, as soon as you're done soldering a component, you can cut those leads right off. Now, I'm just going to struggle uh, and go through and try to solder with, uh, within the forest of leads. Since we're soldering with components on the other side, it's hard to know what orientation they're in. Like, are they sticking up? Are they folded over a little bit? Uh, with these types of components, like resistors and capacitors, it doesn't matter. Uh, next, when we go into doing the LEDs, we're going to want to make sure that everything is sticking upright. All right. So here are all of my connections. Uh, let me just do a visual spot check. I'm going to reflow. Reflow means re, uh, reheat something so it gets uh, a nice shine on it. Solder should be nice and liquid, uh, and there should be a lot of flux or rosin in the core. Okay. So now I'm going to trim the leads on these. Be careful when you're trimming leads. I use uh, one of these angle cutters and just make sure you hold on to the leads because when you cut them they can easily just sort of fly anywhere and if you're working near other people you should be wearing goggles or glasses uh, when soldering anyway uh, I'm simply not at this moment uh, but always be careful when you cut these leads because it's easy for them to shoot out and can hit someone all right, excellent. So we have our uh, passes installed over here. Next, as I promised, let's get in and install the LEDs. So here's our LEDs. Uh-oh, I just made like a big jumbled mess with them, and they're all just clear. So what we want to do is have the red LED be in position 1, yellow, green, blue, and white. So I'm going to bring in my uh, helping hands again just to hold this a little bit. And now we're going to test each of these LEDs. Uh, so I'm going to use a, a CR2032 button battery, 3 volts. Uh, the long lead of the LED is the positive, which should go on the smooth side. The negative uh, should go on the button side on the bottom. And we touch it in, and there we go. It's green. So I said that green is going to be uh, LED 3. The long lead goes at the curved side here on the uh, on the silk screen, and the short lead, the negative, is at the flatted side. These are 3 millimeter LEDs, so it's a little hard to feel the flatted side if it even is flatted uh, on these. Okay, so that's the green one. <clears throat> Next, oh, blue. So again, the long lead goes in the top curved side, the short lead goes on the flatted side, and I want to make them make sure that they're facing outward pretty uh, pretty straight. Okay, that's yellow, which is LED 2. Hoo -hoo. That's white, uh, a warm white. I don't know why I've chosen a warm white over a cool white. I think cool white's a little too blue usually, but this one's extremely warm. Oh, and there we go. This one is red LED. Uh, the long lead goes in the top. The short lead goes on the flatted side. Boom. And we have all of the LEDs in. So now I'm going to solder them in. So the easy thing to do now is just to, again, like, just take my business card, put it on here, flip over. And now all of my LEDs are still facing up. Uh, they should be fairly straight. And I will bring over my iron. Again, be careful in the forest of, uh, of leads. If you don't get overzealous while you're soldering, uh, always trim up all your, all your excess leads. Makes it easier to access and uh, 
perform all the other tasks. And if you're in a spot and it's it's a little tough, or if you're trying to solder a pad and it's just not taking it, you know, give it a break. Don't overheat pads. The the last thing you want to do is apply uh, too much heat for too long. It should only take three, two seconds. I mean, five seconds is a very doable amount of time. And again, for the soldering uh, of a ground pad, does sometimes take more time, more heat to heat up the board. If you end up with excess solder, one thing I do is I just run my soldering iron straight up uh, the lead and it'll drag some of that excess solder up away from the joint. And that way when we trim these leads, uh, we'll be left with something that's nice and uh, nice and flush. See like there's a big blub there. Here I'm gonna come back in and re-solder this particular joint. Seems to flow quite easily. And now I will trim these leads again, holding them with my fingers as I cut them. And don't cut too close, you know, you don't wanna, if you cut too close, you can eat, rip up the actual soldering pads, the metal uh, copper traces from the board. Okay, there we go. And we have our LEDs. If you're, any of your LEDs don't look perfectly straight, just go in and straighten them up. There we go. You can also 3D print a little jig to make it easy to do the LEDs. Uh, I did that with the MIDI Sprout. Didn't do that with this one. All right, our LEDs are in. Next, let's do the rest of the passives, which is going to be these 10 ohm resistors, same as we did on the other side. Just put a little bend in them. And stick it through two slots. I'll slide in my helping hands there again. You want to make sure when you bend these resistors over that you don't leave too much sticking straight up. Uh, there is the top of the case, a 3D printed case, which we don't want to run into. I mean, it's not that big of a deal certainly, and these are really tiny resistors, but it's something to note anytime that you do any resistor in this like, you know, vertical format to make sure you know what your vertical clearance is. Uh, sometimes people will do this in order to save some horizontal space on a circuit board, uh, which is what I've done here. Okay, so I put all those on. So now I'm going to, again, put my business card on there and flip it over. And now let's have at this forest of resistors. I believe that everything along this edge is ground. So that means it's gonna potentially be a pain in the butt to, uh, to get to work. Now, you could always heat, preheat your circuit boards. Uh, for instance, if you have a 3D printer, uh, you can just pop the circuit board on the, uh, the heated bed, you know, heat the bed to 60 or something and uh, put a circuit board on there for you know, 15, 20 minutes and it'll get nice and warm. So this one is not nice and warm. <laughs> so I'm going to have to spend a couple extra seconds warming up the pad. But now once I get a couple of these solder to ground connections heated up, the rest of them should flow a lot easier. Another thing to do is make sure you can put pressure down onto the pad. That'll make sure that you're getting good conductivity for the heat uh, out of the tip of the soldering iron. All right. Even with this solder, uh, solder sucking uh, vent on my tip, you can see there's a lot of 
rosin smoke that comes up, you have to ensure you're in a well-ventilated space. That doesn't mean just a ceiling fan. Really, you should have ventilation going across your workspace uh, and away from you when soldering. So I'm just going to come back and touch out a couple of these one more time. And never be ashamed or afraid to go back and re solder a joint, especially if it's a ground connection. And if you end up with too much solder, uh, you can just pull up along, see, the edge. You see a couple of those look a little jagged. That's because I pulled up the excess solder. Now, come back through and trim off the leads. happy with some of my trimming there so I'm going to come back and kind of be careful when you trim right don't let the pieces fly everywhere and keep your workspace clean there we go and here's those resistors in place all right we only have a couple other components left here uh, I'm going to slide this in this is the 3.3 volt DC to DC isolator and this is kind of like the magic box here. This is what allows our 555 timer to be electrically isolated from the rest of the ESP32. And what that does is it allows us to have a better signal from the plant uh, or whatever, uh, you know, fungus or, <laughs> or whatever living thing that you're using the biodata system to detect. And this is what the main difference is between, I think, this device and my previous version uh, and potentially uh, other sellers uh, or builders, uh, this electrical isolation. It's very important. So I'm going to pop in the 555 timer. Uh, again, there's this little notch that we have. We can see it in the silk screen and there's a little notch on the top. And that means that this top left pin, which you almost can see there's a divot in also, uh, is pin one. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to rest the 555 timer on its side. I'm just going to press down a little tiny bit. And that will bend all eight of those pins inward slightly. I'm now going to put it in here and try to make everything fit. Do not push any chips into the sockets unless until you're sure that all of the pins are nice and lined up and then with an even force pop the whole thing in very satisfying okay next i'm going to bring in the potentiometer this is a nice stubby potentiometer which is going to look great with our enclosure uh, you see again that we have two little uh, mounts here and then the three potentiometer pins i'm going to squeeze that so these two pins will more easily go into the big holes line up the potentiometer pins oh let's see it still doesn't line up that good let me squeeze these big frame pins there we go the front three are in and then this snaps in cool now let's come back here and solder in the potentiometer uh, one of these three pins is ground, so it'll take a little extra heat, a little extra pressure and time and love, and then it'll solder in cleanly. The other two pins should be very easy to solder. I am not going to solder the, uh, the support lugs. Uh, that means it's a little wibbly and it, or this allows me to be able to manipulate the potentiometer slightly, and it makes it easier to fit into the enclosure at the end. Okay, we're almost done here. The last things we're gonna to need to do now are attach the uh, final row of header to the bottom here and attach the ESP32. So what I'm gonna do is bring in this, so again, this is short header I have uh, gotten from Adafruit. The short header is really great because it makes a cute little package at the end uh, with the enclosure. 
and then I have short male headers. So I'm just going to stick them, oops, stick them into the ESP32 feather. If you have a different feather board that you're using uh, for this project, <clears throat> and it already has male headers on it, you can trim them and they'll mate in. Uh, so here I'm going to fit all of the headers together, press it together, and now my goal is to solder all of these pins. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of pressure and I'm going to try to solder in that pin first. Then I'm going to come back to the top and again put a little bit of pressure and solder that pin. Okay. Now I'm just going to work my way right down the line. If you end up with a solder bridge, uh, don't remorse. Simply heat up both of the pads and then pull your soldering iron away. Always periodically wipe off the tip of your soldering iron. That way you can keep it nice and clean. And so if there's any uh, excess solder on there, you can wipe it away. I am using a uh, brass, like steel wool, I guess, kind of, um, to clean up my soldering tip. And I always wipe it off before I put it down each time. There we go. So I have all of the pads soldered in. Now we'll flip it over. So again, my ESP32 uh, feather board is not soldered on yet, but everything else is nice and ready. Uh, I will now quickly solder this on. Uh, attaching the feather board is pretty easy, but this is a little bit of fine soldering, right? Uh, parts are a little bit closer together than they were on the rest of the bio data board. So if you're new to soldering, you know, be very careful here. Feel free to practice before uh, you jump in. So I'm going to hold this with my hand, put a little bit of pressure on there, and solder on to pin 21 at the bottom. And then I'm going to come up here and solder onto the reset pin at the top. Okay, now that it's tacked on, the whole system will be much easier to manage. So we'll go into the TX pin, RX serial, The BioData device only uses a handful of the pins. Uh, pulse width modulation for the LEDs for nice fade effects. And uh, the potentiometer, of course, and a button, as well as the BioData input from the 555 timer. But that leaves tons of pins on the ESP32 here, which a uh, experimenter could attach other peripherals or sensors or devices to. You could easily add in a uh, humidity or temperature sensor uh, or other types of sensors on here, or use a different feather board uh, that has like a data logger with an SD card uh, to store long durations of uh, bio data, or potentially uh, use one of the LoRa radio frequency for long range transmission to uh, have a biodata device deployed in the wild. Uh, one of the reasons that I use the feather boards is because, well, Adafruit rocks. Uh, and also, these boards already have built in. Oh, here we go. I got a nice solder bridge going on. So let me, let me show you how to fix that. So here, these two pins are solder bridged. I'll now just stick my soldering iron in between, heat them both up, and then just pull it away. Didn't seem to do much, but now I'm going to clean off the tip of my soldering iron uh, and come back in here. Now, whether you have a sponge to wipe this off on, like a wet sponge or even a wet paper towel, so I can heat it up and then pull it away. There we go. Now it's cleaned up. 
Uh, one of the best things about these feather boards is that it has the lithium polymer ion battery charger built right into it. Uh, so in a lot of ways, the, uh, the heavy lifting, some of the hard work, uh, and the small components are really taken care of by the feather boards automatically. Uh, you know, the USB ports for programming eventually with the ESP32S3, the USB port will also be able to be used for USB MIDI, but not in this current version. So we have serial MIDI out the black port. We have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi MIDI using the ESP32. And here we are, let me turn off my smoke absorber. <laughs> here we are, uh, fully assembled. The uh, switch here is in the in position is off. Now I'm going to plug in the ESP32 and you'll see the yellow uh, charging light is on. I do not have a battery plugged in currently. Uh, and I'm going to flip the board over and flick the switch to the out position. Now this is a brand new ESP32. So you'll see, oh, the red lights flashing on the bottom here of the ESP32 and we have a blue light on the top. Uh, I'm going to pop into Arduino and upload the code base for the BioData system. If you need to reset the device, you can hold down the power button during the light show. So here we have all the lights light up, and I will hold down the power button. Oh, if you notice, this top LED is not illuminating, so something's wrong. Okay. Well, here, let's unplug the system, turn it over, and see what it is. I'm going to unplug my ESP board, and I'm going to look. Let's see. It's the top LED here, so I'm going to turn back on my soldering iron. And you know what? It, by looking up there, yeah, that top pin does not look very well soldered in place. I bet you that's what's wrong. See? Even I can make a very easy soldering mistake. More so, it's very easy to make soldering mistakes. Uh, so you have to be very careful, very patient, and always test. Um, I do know that the code's now uploaded on here, so that'll make things easy to check out once we continue through. Uh, so now I'm gonna come back in here and see if the iron's nice and hot. And I will solder in that top pin one more time. Okay. And we should be all set. So I'm going to now plug back in the SP32 board, turn that into the off position, plug in the USB, I hit the power switch, and then one more time, everything lights up and the white lights up. I'm going to hold down the power button, and now the white light lights up. It's now reset into its default parameters. If you ever need to reset your board, hold down the button as it's booting up, and that will reset it. Uh, and by being reset, it's in Bluetooth mode, uh, serial MIDI is active, and now we want to check real quick and test that the bio data circuit works. Here's a little trick. Uh, because we're using stereo audio jacks, here's just a little stereo patch cable. Now I'm just going to touch this with my fingertips. I'm going to turn the potentiometer. Uh, the potentiometer over uh, counterclockwise is a low threshold or high sensitivity. And as you turn the knob uh, clockwise, it becomes less sensitive, uh, higher threshold. So I'm going to squeeze this. And we see that the biodata system lights up. Excellent. So this thing is going to be ready to put into an enclosure and then do final testing uh, by connecting to a Bluetooth device. So I hope that this tutorial, uh, an overview of assembling the new Biodata sonification system was helpful to you. Uh, check out some of my other videos where I show you how to utilize the different menu modes as well as how to connect your device to your computer or your iOS or Android device. Uh, 
feel free to check out my website, Electricity for Progress, where there's tons of uh, bio data sonification information, and on my store where you can purchase either a kit or a pre-assembled device that also has a 3D printed enclosure. On my GitHub, you'll find all of the code for this device as well as the schematics for the board and the uh, 3D designs for the enclosure as well as some links to Tinkercad, where I do my extremely simplistic 3D CAD design for the enclosure. So, thank you all very much for uh, sticking through this particular tutorial, and I hope you enjoy your biodata sonification. Cheers. <laughs>